so I learned how to take the back from here, I learned how to take the back from here, all this kind of stuff, right? Um, Marcelo always talks about using the seat belt, and there's a really good reason why you should always use the seat belt, because you, your partner really can't unbuckle you unless you start making the moves, right? The problem with your entry before, right, Richie, is that, like, you know, valid technique here to, to be using the grips and the sleeves and holding on to secure your partner, but you're not really doing anything to secure the top of their shoulder, or mm. if you're like this, mm -hmm. it's not strong enough of an anchor to keep mm. your partner down. Right. Very different from this. Right. right, so this should be the default, always. This is always the default. Whenever I fight from the back, this is always the default. The thing about the seatbelt grip too, like a lot of you guys may learn to just hold the back and you hold with your fingers clasped like this or like this. There's a lot of different ways that we hold it. Seatbelt is always bottom hand on top. There's a big reason for this. If I'm holding like this or I'm holding like this, look at where Richie starts to defend. He's going to defend my attacking arm. So if I go bottom hand on top and he starts to defend, he starts to defend against the arm that's not attacking, right? Because it's this hand, sorry, no, most of the time people are going to defend this hand, and then the arm is still free. If he decides to go ahead and attack this arm, that's fine. I'm going to peel the grip, he's going to be attacking, he's going to be attacking, right? From here, I might pull my his head back and sink it in a little bit deeper, and then look to finish the choke. But the key here is that with the seatbelt grip or any grip, you want to make sure that you're making use of everything, like your grips, your setup, everything matters. If you fumble your grip and you come here, you're going to have to recover from that. So, always practice the seatbelt. You want to keep your chest on your partner's back. That never changes. But the other thing about seatbelt too is I don't want to have my head here. I want to stay really tight. I'm like a pack on his back, right? And then when I look to attack, the most basic way that I, I'll set up a choke, like a bow and arrow choke that I really like, from here, I'll look to open up the lapel. So even if Richie starts defending this hand, I can still get my fingers around his lapel, right? I'm gonna open it up just a little bit. This is a detail that I show on the DVD. I turn the collar in, and I'm gonna go with my thumb inside and wrap my four fingers behind his lapel. I'm not just wrapping here, okay? So I'm going really deep. The fat part of the lapel should be facing the palm of your hand. Okay, and then from here, if Richie still continues to defend, that's fine. I'll let him defend because I want him to go to his side. He doesn't really have too much room to move. We're gonna go to the side. And even if he has his four fingers inside my wrist, this grip is generally so deep that you're gonna finish it. But the grip is really vital here, guys. It's not, again, it's not your general, I'm just gonna grab the lapel and go for a sliding collar choke. I can't tell you how many times I come here and I'm like, I can't finish the choke or you're just you're just pulling and raking at your partner's neck So just take the time here to turn the collar in fat part on the palm of your hand wrap behind and then look to finish It's much tighter. Okay, it keeps your wrist straight hmm. but The the, uh, the transition you do have to let go of the seatbelt at some point in time in order to do that At, at some point in time I do have, have to let go of the seatbelt right but but the way in which I'm letting go of the seatbelt is that I've baited you to start attacking an arm that doesn't really matter yet, right? Right. Because this arm, mm -hmm. if you would peel this arm off, look, I still have this deep, right. right? Then I can peel this open and start to attack. If I'm trapping you like this, or like this, I haven't trapped your shoulder so you can slide up, hmm. and I'm giving you a lot of space to move. You can, if I hold you like this, you can move side to side. There's right. also the escape where you trap your elbows really close to your rib cage, right? And then I can't do anything with my hands. Right, right. So you want to keep your hands free. Right? And with this, at least one of your arms will always be free. Because you're protecting it with I'm your I'm protecting palm. it, right? I'm here. Mm -hmm. And even if you, so let's say you attack the other arm, right? This one. Yeah. This one, yeah, it's irrelevant. You see? I can peel this off. You can come here and trap it, right? Mm -hmm. So the idea is sort of being very strategic about how you're setting your hands up. So it matters. Is, there, is there a time where you do want to control the wrists? Is there a time like when you just say, like, seatbelt always uh, no, and, and I mean, until. There's times here where, if I, if I, one, of, one of my favorite, uh, you know, you really get jacked up kind of moves is I'll be here. You know, mm -hmm. when you go to defend, mm -hmm. I'm going to trap the arms here. Well, that's cool. Okay. This is like parallel train tracks. You're not crossing your arms over. But from here, what's really nice is when we're on our backs, I'm going to dump one hand and trap it. And then I can go two on one. 
parallel train tracks, meaning meaning that might might. You see how I crossed your arms over, but they're not they're not crossed over in an X pattern. Like you see how we're making a clear. Path? They're parallel, yeah. so you never want me to do this. No, you're not forcing me to do this. I don't want to be like this. Okay. So top hand grabs the top, bottom grabs the bottom, and I'm going to force the hand down, two on one. Okay. You could get into the, the grip fighting that Marcelo teaches is is pretty amazing. It's a little bit confusing to just show in like five minutes. Right. But and you're doing that because your arm controls my shoulder. Whereas the way I was doing it before, can I borrow your back a second? Please? You're saying that when I when I was doing it this way, here there was this shoulder was bare. Yeah, you're not, you're not controlling So you're saying, ah, oh, I get it. So here my arm is trapping his shoulder. And this is the reason why it works. This is the reason why well, it's Well, in this position, you're in more of a straight jacket, right? That's you, brilliant. You've got him in a straight jacket. And let's say Stefan tries to bridge. Right. Take his bottom hand, Richie. Dump it. Yes. Oh, and now you attack awesome. two. Now I can switch. Oh, okay. I get it. So this, this shoulder is trapped then. You, well, you have to, you have to think That's about brilliant. what you're defending. You don't want the bot. The, so the principle of defending the back is get your back to the mat. You can't let your partner have the, the space to get their back to the mat. You have to defend that first. So if you have a seatbelt grip, where you have a really tight grip where you're not giving them any room, then you're, you have a lot more room to play around with your hands, right? Once you let go of that control, once you lose notion of the fact that, oh, their back is starting to slide off my chest, that's where you're gonna lose the position. That's great. Now, is there a specific process to get this? That's cool as hell. Okay. Is there a specific process to get it's, that? It's a matter of how your how your partner uh, defends your arm attack, right? So when you go seat belt and they go to put their hands can, on can top. Can you see of your... that? I'm looking. So you have seat belt. So you go seat belt, and it's so it's right here. As soon as I start seeing your. Attack, oh, I see. You're actually intercepting my hand. Yeah. So again, it's a transitional moment, right? Right. And, and let's say I, I just come here. And right, and of course I'm gonna I'm gonna defend this hand. Yeah, right. but if you don't get there fast enough, I'm just gonna take the grip. Right, I see, I see. So well, grabbing my hand is really only born on the consequence. If you can grab my lapel, go for the lapel. But if I'm defending, then then pummel and control my wrist. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, what I'm saying is with advanced jujitsu, you have to think about efficiency of movement. You mm -hmm. can't like because you mm -hmm. learn how to defend the back or to attack the back in five moves. That doesn't mean you have to attack in five moves. It means that you should look to finish it as quickly as possible. So start eliminating the steps in between. When people ask me, well, what's so great about training with Marcelo? Or what's that like? And I'm like, I've never trained with anybody that moves with so much efficiency. Like, I swear to you, if you learn how to do butterfly sweep in five movements before, he teaches it to you in two. And I think that's why you see elite level jujitsu getting so much better because they, they, they're cutting, they're trimming the fat off the state. You know what I mean? So just because you learn something a certain way, don't necessarily stick to every single movement if it's slowing you down, mm -hmm. right? You gotta think about what's important. And what's important when you're attacking the back is that you maintain control of the back and that you look for the right openings. Not that you grab the lapel here and that you have this wrist and you know, don't get caught up in all that. You gotta stick to the principles. Right.